Some communities in North Alabama have been making headlines recently after the West Morgan East Lawrence Water Authority issued a notice to its customers not to drink or cook with the tap water because of chemicals that have been linked to cancer. And with recent stories about the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, people are understandably upset. What's going on in North Alabama is a complicated mess of EPA guidelines and scary sounding chemicals, so it can be a little hard to follow, but let's see if we can untangle it. There are two things we can say about the water in the affected parts of North Alabama. Number one, the water is probably safer now than it has ever been. And number two, if the water is dangerous now, it has probably been a lot more dangerous over the last 50 years. So let's unpack this. First of all, North Alabama is not Flint, Michigan. In Flint, the water issues are largely caused by lead contamination. But for the affected communities in North Alabama, the issues are caused by two chemicals, perfluorooctanoic acid and perfluorooctanoic sulfonate. Or at least I think that's how they're pronounced, usually they're just abbreviated to PFOA and PFOS. These chemicals started being produced back in the 40s because, among other things, they can be used to repel moisture and grease. They have been used for things like Teflon, candy wrappers, Scotch Guard, and protective outdoor clothing for more than 50 years. Back in the 60s, a company called 3M, who was one of the chief producers of PFOA and PFOS, opened a plant in Decatur, Alabama to make the chemicals. At the time, some wastewater from the plant containing the chemicals ended up in the Tennessee River. Over over the course of the following decades, the companies making the chemicals made a shocking discovery. This man-made chemical that previously didn't exist was getting everywhere. And I mean everywhere. If you're watching this video, you likely have trace amounts of PFOA or PFOS in your system. And I don't just mean if you're in Alabama, I mean if you are in America, if you are in Thailand, if you are a sentient polar bear watching this on a laptop in Alaska, you most likely have PFOA or PFOS in your system. That's partially because of its prevalence in different products and partially because the chemical takes a long time to break down. But if this stuff has been around for so long, why are you just now hearing about it? Well, that's because studies linking the chemicals to a whole host of illnesses, including cancers and birth defects, weren't really completed until the late 90s and 2000s. Because of how long it takes to break down, repeated exposure to them from a source like, say, your drinking water can cause it to build up to dangerous levels. As the research came out, 3M announced they would stop making PFOA and PFOS in 2002 which was good because new chemicals weren't being produced. But all the industrial waste that had been dumped into nearby landfills over the years were still running off into the river, as well as treated sewage containing the chemicals that was used as fertilizer in nearby farms. So while contamination dropped dramatically, it didn't disappear completely. As more and more mounting evidence showed potential health risks for PFOA and PFOS, in 2016, the EPA changed their guidelines to say that the chemicals could be harmful at concentrations as low as 70 parts per trillion in a water supply. The old advisory level was 400 parts per trillion. The water tested from the West Morgan East Lawrence Water Authority showed PFOA and PFOS in a concentration of 230 parts per trillion, which meant when the EPA guidelines changed, an advisory was put out. And those in charge of the Water Authority took it a step further and outright told everyone to stop drinking the water. But that wasn't the only water system affected. A total of eight Alabama water supplies issued advisories when the EPA guidelines changed. So the water in those communities in North Alabama isn't suddenly more dangerous as a matter of fact, it's likely that PFOA and PFOS were much more prevalent in the water before 3M stopped manufacturing it in 2002. But the standards for what is considered safe have changed. So what's being done? Well, there is a filtration system that can clean PFOA and PFOS from the water in the Tennessee River. But that's going to take time to build. In the short term, the plan is essentially to take the contaminated water and mix it with clean water from other locations to essentially dilute the amount of PFOA and PFOS down to safer levels. Now, that may not sound ideal, but it's the most viable stopgap until a long-term solution can be funded and built. Oh, and it may not surprise you to learn that lawsuits are flying like crazy in recent years against companies who manufactured and used PFOA and PFOS. So hopefully now it's a little more clear what's going on with the water in those areas in North Alabama. I'm Jonathan Soboleski for AL.com.